Ollie Stevens. We covered the whole case on the channel of how this young boy was set up by a girl and today, finally, the people who did it have been sentenced. Two 14-year-old boys who had put up videos with flick knives and were convicted of taking Ollie's life were sentenced to 13 years and 12 years in a young offender's institution. And a 14-year-old girl who set up the ambush and admitted manslaughter and perverted the course of justice was sentenced to just three years and two months in a young offender's institution. And because of their age, none of these defendants can be named due to legal reasons. I actually thought all three of them would get the same sentence. The girl played the biggest role in getting Ollie to that scene of the incident and caused the whole thing in the first place. If it wasn't for the girl, Ollie wouldn't have been there that day. But maybe because she didn't have no involvement in the actual attack that got out of hand and wasn't to know his life was going to be taken. But obviously she noticed a possibility when people were carrying weapons. What do you guys think on the sentencing? His parents have responded and have put together a tribute video talking about Ollie. He is a massive loss to our family. Mm. So entertaining, so funny. Mm. And loving, and a massive hugger. Yeah. Yeah, and he was capable of so much love as well. Yeah, my relationship with him was very special. Because mm. he, <clears throat> he was just great to be around. He was just... If he liked something, he really loved it. He just would do it, wouldn't he, as much as he could, so. Yeah, he's very funny, he was a natural entertainer. He was mm. very sensitive to other people's feelings and his friends. Yes, um, he was. He was a deep thinker too. He always thought about things way beyond his years, I think. He was always older than his age. Always got the feeling he got the best out of any day. He had no time for quarrels, he had no time for bickering. Or, or fights or anything like that. But he would, he'd always look into things, you know, to the nth degree. So he wanted a perm and that was about two and a half years before we said, all right, you can have a perm then. But then even getting the perm, he was on Amazon looking to see everything he needed with a perm, an afro comb. He needed the, because it can do the product you put in. And yeah, so, and even before that, before we'd agreed, because it was lockdown, He'd even bought a, a perm you could do at home and all the rollers and the papers, but yeah, which luckily we couldn't do it, so we didn't do it, but. He loved his bike. The bike was a big part of his life the last year or so. And he saved up to buy himself the appropriate bike, having trashed three of our other bikes <laughs> that weren't fit for purpose, for wheelies, but. Um, mm, he did, he saved up, didn't he? Christmas and birthday, all his money went towards that bike. And he was a good leader as well. He always got other kids to do what he wanted. Mm. And uh, He'd get them excited about a new plan and what they were going to do. Yeah. He was quite driven, wasn't he? But he, was, he was so funny. I mean, I've said this before, but he was the His life and soul of our family. Mm. We miss that incredibly. Mm. Yeah, the house is quiet now, which was before. It was full of life, always full of his friends. Mm. Um, we had all kinds of amazing kids come through the door different cultures, different backgrounds, but they're all brilliant. And he always got the best out of them. The, the, power lo of the love, love that everybody had for him. Mm. Yeah. That morning, I'd, I'd spent the morning doing chores with him. Um, he helped me out a lot. Mm. Um, we discussed his future a little bit. And he was happy, wasn't he? He was really buoyant. Yeah. He was only going over to Bugs Bottom, yeah, so it to wasn't... to see someone we knew. Mm. So it, was, it wasn't a big thing. We didn't think twice about it. No. I think it was just the... It was the sharp rap on the door, really, that then everything unfolded. And I remember opening the door and there being... Um, somebody there that I knew and said what had happened to Ollie and I just screamed up the stairs. I was just watching, uh, watching the afternoon's rugby mm. and I'd, I'd watched the first half and then um, Ollie went out the door and I went to say goodbye to him but my hip and my knee went and I couldn't get to the door so I left him and just let him go and then um, I, started, I went to the window and I watched him walk up the road. Yeah, then the knock on the door and heard a man scream and I just ran, ran out of the house. You were the first out, out of the house. Pushed, 
The guy that was at the front door pushed him out of the way and just shouted out, where is he? He pointed over the field and see sort of the crowd of people that were around him, and I knew it wasn't good. Mm. And then I saw him on the floor. People were trying to hold you back, weren't they? Yeah, they just stopped, stopped me getting to him and it just annoyed me. I just wanted to, to get to him <coughs> and hold You did I, hold I his hand. I got to him and held his hand mm. briefly, but I knew then he wasn't coming back. And it was just silent, it was just deadly silent. Mm. And I could hear the CPR <coughs> on his chest. And just his little pot belly mm -hmm. jumping up and down with the CPR. <coughs> mm. but, yeah, it was just the, the strangest feeling. When I first got to the field, you fell to your knees and you shouted, my boy and my boy, no, you screamed it. I turned around and looked at the, the, the scene and there were just mm. loads and loads of faces, just blank and white and staring, just complete and utter panic. Because mm. there's somebody you've loved and nurtured <clears throat> and we and knew he'd gone, didn't we? We just knew as soon as we looked at him, it wasn't a case of, even though the CPR was happening, you just felt just the colour of his skin and the way he looked so lifeless. He didn't yeah, really Yeah, and feel. when I got up, my, his blood was on my knees and they were quite away from his body, that. so I know that um, he lost a huge amount of blood. But the emergency services fought for him for an hour. Mm. Um, they performed an on-site surgery. They flew a surgeon in from Portsmouth by yeah. helicopter. Yeah, um, everybody did all they could to try. It was staggering. The, um, the emergency services were just amazing. There was nothing they could have done because the injuries he sustained. We now just, know. Just one of them would have killed him. Mm. But there were two, and they were both fatal injuries. Mm. He is massive loss to our family. You wake up and you, you still can't believe you're in this. No, it no. It doesn't go away, you put it that way. I don't think it ever will. And I think I mean, time might make things a little easier, but I don't think it will. I think, mm. You know, this is, this is where we are now. I mean, to lose somebody is hard. To lose a child is harder, but to have a child murdered is just something else. Mm. I want to finish off this video by saying myself rest in peace to Ollie and that tribute video talked a lot about him. It was an insight into a person who lost his life way too young and didn't deserve it. A very, very sad story. Until next time, guys, I'll see you on my next video. Peace out.